But I think it is uh, important that even beyond the dialysis, if we had the ability to do, say, renal transplant, the number of people who would depend on dialysis would also mm -hmm. uh, be bad. And now, as it says now, if you don't have the funds to go outside to get it done, yeah. then you have to stay on the dialysis because there's no uh, end inside. But if you're able to get a kidney donated and transplanted, then you also get out of that. Hi, good day and welcome to another edition of The Lowdown on Ghana Web TV. My name is Daniel Odro. We continue our series of conversations to bring enlightenment on organ donation and organ transplantation in Ghana. We've come to understand that it is very critical to Ghana's healthcare delivery system and that it can give life and improve the quality of lives of those who are in need of organ transplantation. However, the doctors in Kolibu and 37 and other places have told us a lack of legislation to guide them in the transplantation of organs is something that draws them back. Today, we speak with the Director General of the Ghana Health Service to have an understanding of where the conversation about a legislation to regulate organ donation and transplantation in Ghana is. Dr. Patrick Kumabwaji is my guest on today's edition of The Lowdown. It promises to be an exciting one and very educative. Doc, thank you very much for your time. Um, we know you're a very busy man, but this is a campaign that we have taken upon ourselves to try and, and bring some attention to organ donation and organ transplantation in Ghana. What do you know about organ donation in, in Ghana in general? Well, thank you very much. And I also want to thank you for taking such a critical yeah. uh, matter and bringing it out to the public for, 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 for consumption. Organ donation is very important yeah. to every healthcare system. And uh, in the early 1906, that's mm. when the first transplant was attempted. Of course, it didn't work. Okay. So it's something that is going on. And currently, we think there are about, about 91 countries that have legislation mm -hmm. that helps in uh, regulating organ uh, uh, donation. Right. Organ donation can come from, from a, li a living human being to another one. Right. It could be from a dead. Right. Uh, person to another, it requires consent, it requires some storage right. of organs, etc. So having a regulation around it is extremely uh, important for the person of consent, the quality of care, etc. So this is an area that is not just for, and for many parts of the body. Right. It can be the kidney, yeah. which is the most common one that we do. Maybe even your retina, it may yeah. be the cornea, cornea. Your eye, maybe pancreas, maybe your liver. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, if we start with the legislation, not only what is going to help us to as it were develop the capacities to do them, but also help us in stemming the tide of um, trafficking right. of organs, etc. And so, it's, it's about time that we look at that. It affects uh, fertility. Mm -hmm. Um, egg harvesting are all part of the of, of ovarian eggs. Yeah. Harvesting is one important part of, uh, I would say, organ or tissue donation, which is very helpful to others. And we need to have some regulation around them. Are you surprised that for a country that is over 60 years, we have not come to that, to that point yet? Is it not a conversation that should be on the front burner at this critical time in our history? I think from my own history, this uh, conversation started around about 2010, 2019. Okay. I've been working at the Reserve with the Fertility Group trying to see how we can put some uh, regulation around the same thing. Yeah. And um, about 50 or so percent of countries in the world are. Mm -hmm. And I, I know there's a delay, but I think it's better that it is, it's good at least we are getting in there. Mm -hmm. And it is not just something you get up and do okay you need to be able to have build the necessary capacities okay that the law in itself doesn't work right but you need to have the systems you need to have the equipment you need to have the manpower okay you need to have and then finally the law to be able to do such and i think 
the right time is now. We have teaching hospitals, we have consultants, we have urologists, we have specialists who can do this. And so this is, I, I think it's still the best time to do that. Also, um, we, we seem to be a country where our neighbors seek care from here. So mm -hmm. in our quest to do uh, health tourism, this yes. will be a very important uh, aspect that we can do. No one needs to save our people. I also become more of a commercial uh, entity for the country to be able to attract people who otherwise would have had to fly all the way to India and other parts of the world. Okay. But they could come to Ghana and have it done. And I think so the timing, I think, is appropriate now. Your, your colleagues uh, at, at Kolebu and other places who we have spoken to say, like you mentioned, they started the conversation somewhere in 20, 2009, 2010. Yeah. It goes and then, uh, I mean, it's a bit of, it's cold a bit, and then we resurrect the conversation. What do you know about the stage at which it is and what can we do to fast track it? Well, I think we started with individual groups. Okay. Let's say the fertility group will bring their own. Okay. And then the ophthalmic, the, the eye, of the ophthalmologists will bring their own because they're looking at what is in the yeah. What we have now, we have just um, submitted a draft bill. Okay. To the minister. Okay. Just about a week ago. So that we start the conversation. But this one is not just limited to one particular section, but this is covering the entire spectrum of anything that can be donated, okay. or tissue or organ. Okay. And I think this is uh, probably the farthest we ever come to. Otherwise, we've just been having the, um, the fertility specialists who come with yeah. the ovaries yeah. and surrogacy and all that. Everybody are working in silos. in silos. But now I think we have a more comprehensive Okay. Uh, bill that we can start for. So, uh, so your activities also are also in the right time, okay. the right time to be able to push things okay. through. Recently, we spoke to the president's um, advisor on health, Dr. Nsiasa, and he yeah. mentioned that the president is aware of this. He's interested in ensuring that this thing is passed, maybe and hopefully before the termination of his tenure as president. Um, do you feel that in the next year or two, this can be fast track, or you think that we should? We should be a bit more um, uh, carefully optimistic and say maybe it'll take three or four years for this, this thing to actually go to parliament and it, it be debated on. Well, I think the law mm -hmm. can serve as a catalyst okay. for development of the various sectors. So just, um, it's not just about the transplant, the okay. technique of the transplant, also uh, res, um, how to prevent rejection, mm -hmm. how to be able to store the capacity to store the bank, the bank to stop organs and tissues, etc. These are all very important. And so I believe with the law, that will also create as a fact that all these systems will start okay. working. So I believe that the law can go ahead. But it needs well, to go to parliament and all of yes, that. Yes, it needs to go to parliament. And that I can't predict what parliament will we'll say. I hope that the parliament, I think this being a uh, human interest in, yes. will not be <laughs> anything that will create confusion and it should be able to let it go. But we at the health sector, both public and private, need to take advantage of it and also do the necessary capacities to be able to take advantage of the law when it's passed. Do you think we should lobby some of the MPs to fast track it? Because we spoke to some of the MPs, they, they don't even seem to understand. Of course, you're a doctor, so it's easy for you to appreciate. But some of them, it's... It's, it's a very humongous thing to even think about because everybody's careful about what if people are being killed to harvest their organs? What of those who have cultural beliefs that when you die, you need to go with your entire body that God gave you and all of that? Uh, well, it will not be. I mean, to, to donate is by consent. Yes. Even for the dead, if they are not, they're not giving consent before the, the, the organ is taken, you cannot take it. So, but that's the more reason why the law is important. I will not think that, I cannot guess what MPs will say, because we actually not presented anything to them before. Right. And I think you present something, but it's clear that is comprehensive. They will look at it and also demonstrate that we have the capabilities to do that, or also provide the incentive for us to build the necessary capacities to um, do those services. I think that will also be very helpful. So the bill that you have, which comes from some of your colleagues, different, mm. different uh, seg seg segments, yeah. do they reflect what is happening elsewhere in terms of best practices? I think by and large, it okay. does. Okay. But the fact that you have a whole comprehensive 
law or acts or bill mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you should do it unless you build the necessary capacities. But okay. like I said, the law is an important catalyst that even if I'm preparing, these are the things I'm expected to do. This is okay. the way I'm supposed to go about it. And so to help. So uh, I don't think it will be a bad thing to have the law passed whilst we... We, we have the disability law passed. Yeah, we are not able to implement everything, but right. this is the start. Yeah. So, so doc, the 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 gentlemen who donate their their spams, mm -hmm. um, people who their family member is in need of a kidney that they donate. What what is regulating that? Since there is no comprehensive legislation on organ donation in, in it in its entirety. Well, I mean, there's several, there, 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 are, there are practice okay. rules okay. that goes around it. But it also becomes more important, more avoid conflict mm -hmm. when there's a law governing uh, what you can do, who can do what. There are countries, even the number of eggs you can donate, the okay. number of eggs you can put for in vitro is, is regulated. Okay. If some country can put more than three. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, so I think those are the things that we need to also regulate the practice. Okay. All okay. Right. So I think it's just a, another way of completing the cycle to make sure that we, as health professionals, also don't abuse. Yes. Yes. Okay, that's true. Have. And so that's we true. need those laws. So your, your colleagues in Kolebu told us that the last month they did they, it was in July, I think, mm -hmm. or June that they did a transplant, a kidney transplant, yeah. and that they were supposed to do three transplants. Mm -hmm. However, they have a an ethics board mm -hmm. that will speak with the donors and have a sense of why they want to do it. Yes. In the end, they ended up with only two transplants because they figured and, and found out that the other one was being coerced uh -huh. to do it. So they stopped the donor from giving out his, his organ for the, for the transplant. So they ended up doing just two. So that is what we're talking about. So that, I mean, we have the ethics of it, but also if there's a legal back in I mean, mm -hmm. someone can give consent, can decide to change his mind later. Yes. And it becomes a problem. So there are many, many, many things that we need to do. And the law also ensures that we treat the beneficiary of the organ as a patient and also the one donating also as a patient. patient yes. So that we don't treat him as an object who just come in to just donate some kidney and walk away. No. Mm -hmm. We treat them as patients. And that's why we need such law that also help us to, to, to address. What do you say to critics who say, if we pass the law, it could provide a fertile ground for people to kill people, for people to abduct people, kidnap people, and extract their organs and, and for and the sake stop of people it. from doing it now. Okay. What stop people from doing it now? Because there's, maybe there's no awareness about it. No, I, I think there's a lot of awareness okay. about it. There are certain things that are not, may not be clear to you unless you have a victim. Okay. If you have a renal problem, mm -hmm. a kidney problem, and you need a kidney, you get to know yes, that's what true. is happening. That's but true. if you don't really have it, you think it's not out there. But those who need to know, they know. Okay. And I think that's the more reason why uh, is to ab ab stop all these abuses. Okay. That is why the laws are there. So that even the, the people who are supposed to police, to protect people, know what should not be done and what can be done. So I think we need a law. Okay. Uh, and that will not really raise and make people do the wrong thing. That will even create, let, let, aware, let people be aware of the fact that, yes, somebody may have uh, coerced somebody to go to K uh, India and donate a kidney. Yeah. Isn't it? Yes. That doesn't stop the person from doing that today. So I think the law will really help us and also give us the necessary capacity and the training to do what we as a, as a health sector can do. What, what do you anticipate could be some of the pushbacks because I spoke to the CEO of Kolebu. He mentioned that they have they are working with the traditional leaders because they understand that there are people who have traditional beliefs and and it could be is one of the stumbling blocks in the passage of this of this law or bill and all of that. Do you anticipate that these things could happen? There are people who believe in the afterlife. There are people who yes. believe in all sorts of things. I believe that we're going to have those uh, concerns. Um, we are a very spiritual yes. society. Mm -hmm. We are going to come up with all manner of spiritual reasons why you should not go in the afterworld with your only with only one kidney. Yes. 
among them. But those are going to have. We have the same thing with vaccination. Yes. And it's uh, those uh, mis and misconceptions are going to come up. Yeah. But and that's why we have people like you, media, to help. And that's why we also engage community and traditional authority, the religious body, to be able to have an understanding as to how the benefits against the the, the perceived fears. Right. And I believe that it's not going to be simple. We need to work the same way we work with introduction of vaccines. Uh, any service is going to have people who are going to have their own misgivings. Okay. But I believe that our parliament will, will rise to the occasion. Okay. This is still the lowdown on Ghana Web TV. My name is Daniel Odro. We're having a conversation with the Director General of the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Kuma Abuaje. We're speaking about organ donation and organ transplantation in Ghana and uh, how we can expedite the uh, conversation about legislation around it. We'll go for our first break. When we return, we'll have about 10 minutes or so with Doc to wrap up uh, about the health sector in Ghana in general. Stay with us. We're back after this break. Everyone needs the perfect snack to munch on during a fun moment. Wow. Enjoy the tasty McBerry twist cupcakes, wow. deliciously baked and packaged for a sweet treat. Premium quality cakes, baked with love for all, enriched in butter and milk. Mm, yummy. Oh, McBerry Twist Cupcakes, simply irresistible. Try one today. This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back from the break. This is still the lowdown on Ghana Web TV. My guest is Dr. Patrick Kumar Bwaji. I don't know if he still practices, but he's been a, a, a doctor for the best part of three decades now. Doc, do you still practice? Uh, it depends on how you define as practice. I think what <laughs> you still I'm go doing, to the theater. What I'm doing is also practice. But so. you, you go to the... No, no, no. You don't? No, no, no. Don't you miss it? Well, I think I had enough of that. So. <laughs> oh, really? I, I'm moving to a different stage. And this is also practice. Okay. Uh, public health is practiced, management is practiced, health management practice. So it's still part of the practice. And is I it when there are, when there are um, uh, strikes and things, all the retired doctors and everybody seem to be called upon to come to the, to the hospital to help, to chip in? Uh, have you had a case like that? Oh, no, 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 not really. I mean, I've not retired yet, so okay. I've not had to be called. But I've been to monitoring okay. in, in a region for some work and because of emergency i'm called from my hotel to come and assist and i go and operate and come back and sleep so okay <laughs> so doc the, the next leg of our conversation has to deal with people who have I mean, who are in accidents that we can have some of their organs and all of that if if there is they have consented if there's law they've consented how do we know this person has consented? Is there, a, is there going to be a database? How do you know that this person has consented? Well, um, because we haven't done it here, but the other practices is that um, there's a database. Okay. And in, in countries where they know a bit about everybody, mm -hmm. maybe Ghana now, if they pick your Ghana card, yeah, they, they may key know it in. that you are somebody who has consented uh, before and then they can see what they can do about it. So I think the database is important. Now that we are having this um, national ID card, which yeah. puts all that in one particular place, you should be able to use that to see whether this is somebody who has consented mm -hmm. uh, to, to donate. And they usually have a little slip that either goes with them or in their wallet or something. So I believe that uh, that could still okay. be made available. So organ transplant or, or, or transplantation is not only limited to kidney. We have yeah. the cornea, like you mentioned, pancreas, liver and all. But it would appear in Ghana, we know of a lot more people needing, who have organ uh, kidney failure yeah. and how they have to go through dialysis, how expensive it is. There's, there have been calls that we should meet these people halfway, that maybe the health insurance should absorb even half or even a quarter of the fees that they pay for 500 CDs or so per session and these people have to do two or three per, per, per week. week that's an expensive adventure what's your take on on, on that suggestion 
I think it's a, it's, it's a major, major, major problem that um, sometimes um, because of the lack of uh, maybe ability to, to transplant, yeah. by the time such people even give up, they virtually lost all their property, they yeah. have to spend so much, the whole family spend so much. And it's so because also I think availability of dialysis is also yeah. a problem. And I think as the numbers increase, if you have more sites, uh, the prices may start going down. Okay. Um, it's not everything that we can we can put on health insurance, but I believe that uh, maybe certain conditions we may have a look at it and see how they can bear. But the most important thing is uh, a lot of the renal diseases are usually, I would say, it's things you don't do or the things you do. You do. Okay. And, and so we have to look at the primary prevention to make sure that people don't actually get that stage. That okay. if you have hypertension, you stick to your medication properly. Um, you don't take all manner of herbs and stuff that has not been tested properly. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they look at it, all kinds of people who are dealing with mercury and all those things in mines and not taking proper care of themselves. They are all part so we can look at the preventive to ensure that fewer people mm -hmm. end up with this stage. Okay. And then we can look at it. And so I think it is, we have to look at it from the more the primary prevention portion and make sure that we create proper access. Even when you have diseases that can, be, that can lead you into that, how do you take care of yourself to avoid getting there uh, or even getting there a bit later than you do? So those are the things with conversation we need to look at. But I think it is... Uh, important that even beyond the dialysis, if we had the ability to do, say, renal transplant, the number of people who would depend on dialysis would also mm -hmm. uh, be bad. And as it says now, if you don't have the funds to go outside to get it done, yeah. then you have to stay on the dialysis because there's no uh, end inside. But if you're able to get a kidney donated and transplanted, then you also get out of that okay. challenge. So those are the things that we need to really look at. Okay. I was listening to a lawyer this morning. He says when when their colleagues enter into places that they are they are supposed to help, they don't they don't help, and it is only lawyers that face the same situation. You are a doctor, and you occupy a very sensitive position. Would you say that you have pushed for the betterment of your colleagues? A lot of stories about the exodus of Ghanaian doctors to developed countries, et cetera, et cetera. Do you think you are doing your best for your colleagues? I think we, uh, as a country, we are doing, I believe, what can be done. A lot of the drive, initially the drive was ability to get a postgraduate training to specialize, and secondly, the funding. Yeah. Now, the second bit of it is the fact that now that the, the postgraduate colleges are here, people are able to do their specialization, that has actually reduced the number of exodus. That's one. Okay. But then the main issue of the financial incentive, yes, that is pulling people out, is also there. And that, there's a limit as to what a nation can do. Okay. Based on your resources, I mean, if somebody is paying somebody, let's say three, four thousand, five thousand pounds a month, and what is this country going to do to prevent that person from then? Are you going to give the person five thousand pounds to? I think those are the things that we need to do. But I think the general population will also have to come in to see how do we also make people appreciative of the work that they do. Mm -hmm. uh, I think most of my colleagues also feel happy when they are appreciated and also creates them to make, uh, to do it. I don't want to call it a, I mean, a sacrifice. I want to call it that your duty and the responsibility to the society that you belong to. Okay. So you, you, you tell them that, are we working with government to ensure that, look, they are going and they need, their incentive elsewhere is, is far better. We may not be able to pay, but let's at least improve their conditions of service because indeed, they, they risk everything to, to, to save yeah, lives. I, I think as a service, we continue to push for better working environment, yeah. better condition of service. 
uh, and we continue engaging with finance, labor, and social welfare with the Ministry of Health to see how best okay. we can make people happy, just like all uh, all agencies will do. Okay. And um, but I believe that um, probably it can only be within what the the common basket can really take care of. Okay. Uh, and I believe that. Uh, let's also appreciate the people who are here okay. and also encourage them to stay. Because in all this, there are many people who are never, I never ever crossed my mind to leave this country. Even though you knew you could get more elsewhere. Yes, and there are many people to, who are also doing that. I think so it's, it's both ways. It's not just looking at the, I would say, the prodigal son, okay. but also the people who are staying back. Okay. Let's make them. Because not everybody wants to leave. Okay. Let's have them encourage them to stay. All right. Doc, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate your time and, and, and the um, enlightenment that we've had on this conversation. Thank you very much and we wish you all the very best. This has been another edition of The Lowdown here on Ghana Web TV. My name is Daniel Joe. I've been speaking with Dr. Patrick Kumabwaji, the Director General of the Ghana Health Service, as we continue our advocacy on organ donation and transplantation in Ghana and the need to have a comprehensive legislation around it, which we believe will save a lot of lives in Ghana. We're back another time with another edition of the show. Until then, it's bye for now.